Monster Jam Stadium Championship Series East is back and it is in one of the most legendary homes of Monster Jam. It is an event that everybody circles on their calendar. It is Tampa at Raymond James Stadium. Tampa, Florida has had some amazing moments and this weekend sure looks like it's going to be a fun one. However, the storyline entering the weekend, there is a new driver behind the wheel of Max D in unfortunate circumstances. Tom Mentz is not going to be competing in 2024 in the regular season and his son, Colton Eichelberger is here. He will be filling in for Tom and running the special bodies in his place for the rest of this series. We'll see how Colton can do. All eyes are on Colton Eichelberger in Max D this weekend. Find out how he does next on Monster Jam. Hello everybody and welcome. Hello everybody and welcome. Hello everybody and welcome. Everybody and welcome to Raymond James Stadium inside of this beautiful venue in Tampa, Florida for Monster Jam Stadium Championship Series East. And that's right, tonight we have the beginning of a two event weekend for this series and back to back commentaries for this series. However, this series has a lot going on right now because the story of the week is the removal of Tom Mentz in Max D for the rest of this series. Colton Eichelberger in Max D is going to be filling in on this series. We'll get to hear a little bit more from him later. But obviously, such a disappointment at this point in the season that Tom Mentz, who had had a magical start to his farewell season competing, is no longer going to be driving on this series. And Colton Eichelberger, that man right there, will be filling in. It is exciting to see Colton back, but it is at no cost. I mean, we may never see Tom Mentz again. So. It's unfortunate. Let's find out who's competing tonight. We start off with Nick Pagliarulo. And no, you're not hearing that incorrectly. It is correct. Nick Pagliarulo is finally here in Kraken. His father, Matt Pagliarulo, is here in Jester. It's a hometown show for the Pagliarulos. Lindsey Reed in the Lucas Stabilizer had a pretty good weekend in freestyle last weekend. Finally starting to pick up the pace. Ryan Disharoon in Shaker. That machine is holding well to this season, and it is nice to see. Jamie Garner, El Toro Loco. He is in a home where a lot of people know him. I'm sure he's going to show off this weekend. Tom the Duke Megalodon had an up and down weekend last weekend. Had a great event Saturday, poor event Sunday. John Gordon, bad company. He is getting so close to that first racing win of the year. Will it come this weekend? Colvin Arn, the Black Pearl, has really stepped it up a few notches. He's been burning it down in freestyle. So is this man, Bryce Kenny, the Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. What wow moments will he have for us this weekend? Tristan England in the JCB Digatron. He got even better in freestyle last weekend, finally starting to step out of his comfort zone. Tyler Menninga, Gravedigger, leading the series. This has been all Tyler Menninga, but will Colton Eichelberger in Max D be able to come in and shift things up? We will have to find out. Before we get started, let's hear what he had to say entering the weekend. You know, man, I'm really excited to be back. Like we said, you know, this isn't why I want to come back, but I've done this before. You know, back in it was 2017 when Tom got hurt and I filled it on a stadium tour. I had a lot of success. So obviously not the way I want to come back, but but Tampa's, Tampa's a huge show. I came here in like 2012 with Tom, and I wasn't even driving yet. I was just a little kid. So this place has a little meaning to me just because of, of history and whatnot. But coming in, I... I'm relaxed, and the reason I'm relaxed is there's not points pressure. Points pressure puts is on everybody. Right. And you know, for my my goal is not to come out and take the points lead. Now, is would that be a bonus? Absolutely. Which we just got to chip away at it slowly. But my goal right now is to take this Max D truck on my dad's retirement year of his retirement tour and treat it just like he would. He was on he was on a great streak, winning freestyle, throwing it down every weekend, right. and he was on cloud nine. My goal is to come in 
keep it on cloud nine and keep this truck in a thousand pieces. Well, it is certainly fascinating to hear it right from the horse's mouth. As we get into Monster Jam Racing, we have Ryan Disharoon and Shaker taking on Lindsey Reed in the Lucas Stabilizer. I'll talk a lot more about Colton tonight as we see him because obviously that is a big part of this weekend and is going to be a big part of the rest of this series. But he's only one driver. There's 11 others that are competing and are still going to try and put on great shows. And already the first race of the night, we are almost halfway through with. Tampa's always an interesting track. It's always such a fun event. And it looks like Lindsey Reed's got a lead across the final jump. I think Shaker made up the ground. I think Ryan Dishroon and Shaker got that win from the naked eye. That's what it looked like. But we'll have to find out in the next round if that is indeed the case because we didn't get to see the times. Now we continue on with round number one of Monster Jam Racing. I love the lighting that they've got in Tampa. They really do it up in Tampa, I'll tell you. Tristan England, JCB Digatron, Jamie Garner, El Toro Loco. Tristan England has been very fast in racing this year. Jamie Garner has been fast, but has not had the luck on his side to make it very far. He's also had to go up against some really tough competitors. Tristan England is no slouch here in round number one. And Tristan England already has about a truck length lead and Garner a weird bounce there. That's gonna hurt him even more and that's certainly not going to help him come back and win this race. Tristan England, the JCB Digatron, looking fast in that first round. We'll see if that continues throughout the rounds tonight. Very solid night so far, but we'll see how it'll continue. It's a 26.980, not a super fast time. Now, this is a big race because it's our first look at both of these drivers in 2024. In the near lane, it's Colton Eichelberger, Max D in the far lane, Nick Pagliarulo in Kraken. Two guys who in week six of Monster Jam are making their 2024 debuts. Nick Pagliarulo, though, he was expecting to come back. Colton Eichelberger was not right now. Nick Pagliarulo has a lead, but he got all caught up on the center pod. So Max D is going to get a lead here. Colton Eichelberger just whipping the cobwebs out right away. Certainly not looking very smooth, but he's lucky that he has a big lead to work with to get settled back in this truck for the first time. Colton is all over the place, but so is Kraken. An absolute wild race, and honestly, I wouldn't have expected it to go any other way. Both of these guys wanted to win that race, and they knew they really had to drive well, and it's their first time competing in the season. And Colton Eichelberger with a 29.914. That's not going to cut it tonight, but he still gets himself into round two. We continue along with our final race in round number one. We have Bryce Kenny in the Great Clips Mohawk Warrior, and his opponent will be Matt Pagliarulo in Jester. Matt Pagliarulo, very close to home. He is a native of Florida. That's where their shop is. So hopefully they got a chance to really look at these trucks this weekend and find out what's been going wrong. But Jester all over the center of that pod, too, just like Nick was. And that's going to open up the door wide open for Bryce Kenny. First time through, Bryce Kenny with a big lead. We'll see if that continues here through the final turn. It's looking like it is all Mohawk Warrior here in round number one. Matt Pagliarulo is unfortunately knocked out in his hometown. Not a very fast time. It seems like the track is a little bit slower tonight. We'll have to wait and see. I love that they've got the lights, the color of the trucks that they're announcing. Only, only in Tampa. Only in Tampa. <laughs> this next race starts off round two. Ryan Dishroon and Shaker takes on, At not Adam Anderson, Tyler Menninga in Gravedigger. I did Adam Anderson yesterday, that's why. Ryan Dishroon and Shaker, this beautiful backdraft inspired body. Can he take down the series leader here in round number two? He is certainly far behind right now, but enough room that he can make up the ground. Can Tyler hold strong and get the win? Around the final turn, Shaker's flying. But unfortunately for him, he tried a little too hard and couldn't get the job done. Gravedigger is your winner. He's on to the semifinals. 27.219 though. This track is certainly not that fast tonight. Looks like a low 27 second time is where you're going to be living tonight. Our next race, we have a pair of world racing champions going head to head. Tristan England in the JCB Digatron taking on Todd LaDuke in Megalodon. Todd LaDuke won his back in 2015. Tristan England won his just last year in 2023. We'll see how these world racing champions will go head to head here. As Tristan England is all in control of this race. Megalodon is just not having it. And Tristan England looking smooth. He might be the smoothest looking driver tonight here in Tampa. He certainly looks faster than everybody else. I have to see the official time because Tristan looks quicker than everyone else we've seen tonight in a track that is running slowly. And there you have it, 26.734. So Tristan England is definitely looking faster tonight. We 
Now continuing round number two, our next race, Cole Venard in the Black Pearl takes on Colton Eichelberger, Max D. Colton Eichelberger, not very fast in round one. He was really all over the place. Can he get it settled down here in round two? Cole Venard, also his first race of the night on what is looking like a slower track. So far, they're pretty even. No one really standing out in this race, and they are dead even across the line the first time. They're certainly pretty close right now. No one really showing off. And Colton Eichelberger somehow pulled that win out. No one really looked smooth in that race, but Colton Eichelberger, who's really not <laughs> running fast tonight, is off to the semifinals. That is really crazy. I'm sure he's feeling great about it. Tom Mentz has not made it past the semifinals yet this season. Can Colton do so? Not a fast time, but faster than his round one time. So if he can improve a little bit more, I mean, it's just it's a matter of repetitions at this point. Next up, we've got John Gordon in bad company. His opponent will be Bryce Kenny in the Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. JCB racing here in round two. We've had a lot of drivers making a lot of mistakes. No real clean passes aside from Tristan England tonight. Who will be able to get it done in the end? Both of these drivers have been good this season, but Bryce Kenny is taking down the man who has had a little bit more success, consistently at least. Coming around the final turn, they're very close, and across the line it looked like Mohawk Warrior. It was a very, very close finish. I think we're going to have to see the times to ensure that he was the winner. It looked to me like it was Bryce Kenny, though. We'll have to find out for sure. And we're not going to... The two times that I've wanted to see the times tonight, he doesn't show the times. I mean, come on. That is so annoying. Well, we move into the semifinals. We'll know who moved on in the next race anyway. We start off the semifinals. This is a very big race, not only because Tristan England in the JCB Digatron has been the fastest driver tonight, but because Tyler Menninga in Gravedigger is your series leader right now, and Tristan England is the only man really giving him any sort of challenge. So if Tristan England can win this race, he'll get really a good boost in the points, and he's been the fastest man tonight. He's the only one looking smooth on this track. Both drivers go a little wide in the turn. Gravedigger a little bit more wide. Gravedigger's behind by a truck length. Will the JCB Digatron get the job done? Gravedigger making up the ground, but he clipped the turning bump. He overcommitted a little too much. He's going to show off at the end after he loses the race. But Tyler Menninger and Gravedigger knew he had to make up the ground. He overcommitted to it. And Tristan England is going to the final round by beating Gravedigger. And he's getting faster by the round two. And his opponent will be either Bryce Kenny in the Great Clips Mohawk Warrior or Colton Eichelberger and Max D. And I'll tell you right now, both of these guys are going to need to really figure it out in this race because Tristan England has been so smooth and neither of these guys really have. Who will win this race? Both of these guys need to get it sorted right now. Bryce Kenny up on two wheels for a moment. He's still not able to keep it flat. Max D up on two wheels now. Mohawk Warrior takes a lead. Mohawk Warrior getting really wide the turn. Max D overshoots the turn. And now he's got some problems trying to figure it out after the jump. Getting close to the wall. Doing everything he can to not hit the wall. And now he's going to have to settle. Now Mohawk Warrior spun out in the turn. What's going on? What is happening in this race? Max D is going to... So Max D crossed the line first. I don't know what that means. K Young was trying to explain it. No way. I have no idea what that means for this race or what the outcome of this race was. Bryce Kenny said some real bad luck in racing. I'll tell you. Okay, so Mohawk Warrior will move on. So. Now. That was a fascinating race. Wayne wants a rerun, but we're not going to get one. We have our final round stage, and I'll tell you, this is going to be a fascinating one. In the near lane, Tristan England in the JCB Digatron. You're defending World Finals Racing Champion, and he has been the only driver to be really nailing this track tonight. And based on the way his races have gone, he should be having an easy victory here because he has been way faster than everyone else. His opponent, Bryce Kenny in the Great Clips Mohawk Warriors, had a real sloppy road to get here, but he's here nonetheless and has a chance to win it all. Who will get the job done? Mohawk Warriors still can't keep it on the ground as we enter the exit the paperclip. 
It is close right now, but Tristan England is just absolutely on a rail. He cannot be stopped. Can he finish the deal in the final turn? Mohawk Warrior goes really wide, and Tristan England, in one of the most important events of the season, takes home the win in racing in the JCB Digatron, and he is fired up about it. Everybody knows that Tampa is one of the most watched events of this season. There are so many executives and Feld higher ups at this event. And the JCB truck was faster than everyone tonight. And that is a huge night. Let's listen to him. Tristan England fired up as he should be. He picks up the first 12 points on the road to the overall event championship tonight. And as I said, Tampa, Florida always has a bit of a heightened sense of excitement for the drivers, for the fans. This is a big building, and it's a very big building to win in. And Tristan England has the first win in this building in 2024, in his first season on a point series in a stadium. How exciting. We start off Monster Jam skills with Lindsay Reed, the Lucas Stabilizer, doing a donut. And she's got, she's kind of got Cyclones working here. She's got some really fast donuts. She's really teetering that line of being on a Cyclone. That was a very good donut. Now, in skills, you can either do a donut or two moves on two wheels. She opted for the donut there, which will probably end up giving her a bit of a lower score, but still a 6.157, pretty decent for a donut. Our next competitor here in this competition is Jamie Garner, El Toro Loco. And they've still got that sticker board painted orange this weekend. Very cool. He's got the reverse popper working. He's got it up on top of the pond. A wheelie bouncing it on the back left. And a good first move there for El Toro Loco. I like that one. Very solid. Jamie Garner has competed in this building plenty of times. He's no stranger to Tampa, Florida or these fans here in Tampa. So... We'll see if he can have himself a good weekend. He's come here many a time in the overboard truck. He would always have it sponsored by Steps anytime he'd be here. And I'm I'm pretty sure they had the Steps tow truck out there holding up Mohawk Warrior in the pit party. Going for a forward popper. He's blowing the smoke. He can't walk it too far, though. And unfortunately, that's probably going to lower his scores just a tad. Pretty decent run from Jamie Garner. We'll put him in first currently, 7.389. We get our first look at Nick Pagliarulo in Kraken in the Skills Challenge in 2024. His brother Michael did a very good job filling in, but we'll see what Nick can do. Nick is a bit of a seasoned veteran at this point, trying the stoppy. His first stoppy after having a child. Not a great one, but, oh, he kind of, the horsepower carried, oh, that's two moves. That is his second hit right there. He going right into his second hit. Walking the wheelie up the ramp, and he will set it down. So that's his two hits. Ooh, I like that. He got it working there. I think he broke an axle in the back right, so he's done anyway. You know they were going to try and let him go for another, but thankfully the truck ended up breaking on him, so he ended up getting to settle with those two hits. 7.380, not quite enough. I think that's a... Wasn't that a thousandth of a point behind what Jamie Garner did? I don't remember exactly, but... Look at that. That guy's got some monster trucks on his hat. Gotta love Tampa fans, man. Next up, Matt Pagliarulo in Jester. Walking a slap wheelie. Oh, no! Over she goes! Trying to save it, but... Looked like they shut him off before he had a chance to save the truck, which is unfortunate, but... for Jester, Matt Pagliarulo. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Appreciate it. Color commentator Wayne stepping up there to tell me the scores. 
Man, that body is not really looking too great after that. But hey, they're close to home. They can always get a different one if they want. Ryan Dish, Rune, and Shaker up next. No one's really gotten a good skills move so far in this competition. Let's see what Shaker can do. He's got the popper walking. There you go. He's got it pretty solid right on top of that Monster Jam logo on the top of the pod. And he will set it down with one move. That was a very solid first hit. He's got one left. I'd say he set himself up pretty nicely to be able to take the lead here, but you still need a pretty good second hit. He's going to go over the step up to try and do a stoppy like he's done many a time. He's got it working. Moonwalking it now. Ah, oh, unfortunately that ramp was a little too steep. He didn't have enough gas, so... He didn't really get much on that second move, but I still think that's your best run of the night. Getting a nice acceleration down the track for the fans. 7.166. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Regardless, Jamie Garner's still in the hot seat for Todd the Duke in Megalodon. He's didn't... He's been really good in the skills challenge so far this year, walking the bicycle, and that's going to be it. He couldn't quite get anything more out of that first move there, trying it again on the near side, on the gray lane. Walking it, still walking it. Can he do anything else? No, just two bicycles for Megalodon. That's your new run of the night, but I don't think the score is going to be much more than like a 7.8. 8.835? Holy cow! That's a pretty high score for what he did, but for once, the fans appreciating a bicycle, which is rare. So Todd the Duke, your new leader with Cole Bernard and the Black Pearl up next. Walking the reverse popper. Got it sitting on top of the racing lane. He'll set it down. He tried to get a little slap wheelie, but couldn't get it in gear in time. Or at least couldn't hit the gas in time. He's got one move left. See what he can do. Cole Bernard always tries to shift it up on that second move, going for the bicycle here. Walking it down the track, but it sets down a little too early. He couldn't quite get it in a nice groove. He was going back and forth. I don't think that's going to be enough for Black Pearl to take the lead. See his crew chief, Connor Bauer, there in the seats. A little disappointed after that run. And a 6.266 will place him in fifth currently in this skills challenge. Next up is John Gordon in the bad company. Ah, look at that. He's got a gunslinger flag on the back representing the late, great Scott Hartsock. Honoring him this weekend here in Tampa in a place that Scott Hartsock used to dominate. Such a nice thing to see John Gordon do. He's always been representing Scott Hartsock. He always had, he had Scott Hartsock on the back of his truck after he passed away. And nice to see him have the flag here this weekend. Such a nice tribute. So after that first bicycle, will he be able to take the lead with a good second move? He's got the popper walking just like Shaker had. He's able to walk it fully across the pod now. Ooh, he's right on the edge! And he will set it down. He was in a bit of a tricky spot there. Pretty solid run. The gunslinger flag, though, didn't give him a lead, unfortunately. As Tyler Menninga and Gravedigger will walk the bicycle on the blue racing lane, getting it into the moonwalk. That was perfection. That was utterly perfect. He could not have done that any better. And he somehow got a little wheelie afterwards. Tyler Menninga is a master at his craft. He's got one move left. Tyler Menninga is so talented at driving monster trucks. Let's see what he does here for the second move. He's got another bicycle on the right sidewalls. Doing a couple revolutions. Oh no, not enough speed to get it back on all fours. Instead, he flips it over. But I'd say it's still plenty enough to take the lead at a 9.087. I'd give it an even higher score, maybe a 9.2. So the door is still open for the remaining competitors here. And that's also going to help a guy like Tristan England out to maybe get some more points gained on Tyler there. But he is still your new leader as Colton Eichelberger and Max D will come out for her for his first skills move in about five years. No, four years. Walking the maximum moonwalk. Ooh, he's still kind of balancing it there. And now he, oh, that's still all one move. The momentum of the landing popped him back onto the stoppy and he's got it walked. And I like the way he does it because he keeps the front two wheels turned a little bit. So it's not fully straight. It looks a little cooler than when Tom does it. He's got that truck flexing. 
Colton Eichelberger has always been so good in this competition. I really missed his skills runs. That's one move, and it was a nice, crisp, long one, too. I'd say with a good second move here, the fans might put him in the first place spot. He is still honoring his father, representing the beautiful candy red Max D body that Neil Elliott used to drive. I haven't even mentioned that body yet because all eyes are on Colt Michaelberger being in the truck. We get to see this beautiful candy red apple body. So pretty, and look at Colton trying to get it up, but he can't get it up in time. And unfortunately, a little frustration after that, but still a decent second move there. I don't think that's going to be able to unseat Tyler Meninga, unfortunately, but we have seen the fans favor Max D a little bit in 2024. We won't see the score, so clearly it wasn't enough. Your next competitor in the skills challenge, he finished in second place in racing tonight. It's the Mohawk Warrior and the driver is Bryce Kenny. Pops it off the back two wheels to get it into a stoppy. Here he's got it bouncing 12,000 pounds on the front two wheels of that Monster Jam truck. The Mohawk just pointed right at the fans. Now moonwalking it back. We've seen a lot of drivers try and get it up the ramps tonight, but Mohawk Warrior the first to really do it. Very solid first move there. I'd say right now, while Tyler Menninger had a really good run, that number is low enough that you can see someone leapfrogging with a run that might not be good enough. Oh no! In a very quick burst, Mohawk Warriors flipped over, trying to pop it off the backflip ramp. A little too much gas, and that's a disappointment there. So now Tristan England and the JCB Digatron has a chance to really get himself some good points. Whoa! Oh my, that was... A little overcorrection from the JCB Digatron, and a 7.510 is going to put him in fifth place. So, at the end of the day, Tyler Menninger in Gravedigger won deservingly. He had the best run of the night, and a very strange skills challenge is going to send us into freestyle. But before we get there, I've got a bit of a commercial on how you can become a member of my YouTube channel. Want to get early access to every single video that I post here on this channel? Well, you can. If you join today and become a member of the Arizona Motorsports Junkie Early Access Fan Club, you can get access instantly to every single video that I post. Skip the lines, watch commentaries two to three days in advance. You can join today by clicking the link in the description or by clicking the little join button at the top of my home screen. Head on over and join today. It is time for the final competition of the night in Tampa, Florida. Monster Jam Freestyle. And in this building, you know, these drivers are going to have a heightened sense of excitement. I'm excited to see how they perform in their two minutes on the track. Two minutes to do whatever they want, scored by the fans, and one of them will be your freestyle winner tonight. Jamie Garner and El Toro Loco is off, announcing his presence, leaping it over the car stack. This series has already been in a home quite not quite as legendary, but pretty damn legendary. Oh my! Nose diving in from El Toro Loco! And a combo into the wheelie! That was a crazy second hit, and Jamie Garner has already got me fired up in Tampa. The home of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers always provides some incredible entertainment, and we'll see how these two events will end up being tonight being the Saturday night event, tomorrow Sunday's event, I'm so thrilled. And freestyle is when things always start to pick up. Jamie Garner certainly showing a little bit more excitement himself here at this point in his freestyle. Look at him, he's getting some really nice air. He's coming out first too, so he's trying to set the bar high and make it a pretty difficult bar to leap over for the rest of the 11 competitors. As I was saying before, this series has already been in an iconic venue this season, being in St. Louis at the Dome at America's Center. That venue, you could tell they were really stepping it up a notch, and then they've just gotten better by the weekend. Last week in Indianapolis, this series went ballistic. These guys were having some incredible freestyles last weekend, so let's see if Tampa takes it up an even further notch. I don't know how you could possibly top what Indy was last weekend, but man, oh man, if there's a place to do it, it's right here in Tampa. Jamie Garner certainly slowed the pace down a lot, though, since that second move when he absolutely dive-bombed that center ramp. So it seems he might have he hurt himself a little bit, you know. That was a hard landing. Oh, he hits the dumpsters. He's going to be done right there. That was a very hard hit to the dumpsters. 
That is too bad. Yeah, he's finished. Once you hit the dumpsters like that, there is no restarting you. Unfortunately, going outside of the bounds of the freestyle track is an immediate completion of your freestyle run and of any run that you have. So, too bad, but you've got to stay within the boundaries of the Monster Jam track. There's plenty of room. There's, there's no excuse. So, unfortunate, but Jamie Garner's run will be cut just a tad short. Look, Pizza Wayne has got himself some pizza. A little Wayne Pizza ASMR. Look at Wayne with the AirPods in the middle of the event. He is swagging out here in Tampa. 7.315, pretty respectable considering he didn't fill the clock. That'll bring up your next competitor here in the freestyle competition. It's Nick Pagliarulo in Kraken here in his hometown. I bet he probably circled this event as the one that he would return to because he didn't have to travel too far for his first event. He could just join his family on the road and then trade places with Michael. Now, it's good to see they got this truck fixed up, or at least we assume they got it fixed up for freestyle because it did have some problems and skills, whether it was a locked planetary or a broken axle. Something was wrong in that back right wheel. So, hopefully the truck is okay and he'll be able to freestyle with no problems. However, this Kraken truck has had so many problems this year, I'm sure Nick Pagliarulo's had to deal with plenty of them. Yeah, they got that truck fixed up, as you can tell, with him doing a nice little slap wheelie. Nope, he might have some transmission problems, actually. Wow, nice leap in first gear. Look at him, he's trying to do everything he can only in first gear. He's definitely only got first gear. So transmission problems for Kraken is the new issue of the competition. There's a new one every competition. Just spin the wheel and find out what it's going to be. It's really unfortunate, and I bet that he's like, man... I was really enjoying not having to work on this thing every single day. And I bet his brother Michael was telling him repeatedly how really annoying this truck was, but man, Nick is really doing a lot with what is really a strained transmission. And I think the truck either shut itself off or they shut him off to try and prevent any further damage there. Yeah, that's the end of the run. K, uh, K. Young tossing out the important word, unfortunately, to let you know. Oh, no, Kermit fell out. You better get that Kermit the Frog because you don't want him to be run over. We bring out our next competitor here in the freestyle competition. It's Ryan Disharoon in Shaker. He is going to back himself pretty much up to his parking spot, ready to go for his first move. Look at him coming out and getting a nice little leap to start himself off. And a nice combo, too. So two trucks in, we had one freestyle that started with a bang and then really slowed down a lot, and then the second run, more transmission problem really ended up keeping him from having anything going. So let's see if Ryan Disharoon can keep it up. Or at least turn it up. Nice job, he cleared the entire center pod. And in past years, you would never be circling Shaker as the guy who you can guarantee the truck will hold together for him for an entire freestyle, but this season you can. This thing has been a great piece of machinery. Certainly carrying a lot more speed than we've seen from the other competitors here tonight. And you're coming out third in freestyle. Instead of first, you have an opportunity here. You could really get a good, solid number. You get a backflip and have a really solid run throughout. You might be able to win freestyle by coming out in this spot. The conditions we've had so far in this competition. Spinning it around, it really over-twists him. And he comes right back for some big air. Ooh, a weird little bounce there, and he doesn't have much room to recover because the pits, the truck's being pitted on the floor certainly does not help if you have a weird, awkward bounce after that kind of jump. It looks like he's going to clear the pod again. Yes, he does, fully clearing the pod from this side. He's cleared the pod from both ways. Oh, my, look at him. Sending it a little sideways. Flashbacks to Lupe Souza. With that one, just turn the truck into the racing lane. Could have ended up being pretty bad for Shaker, but it didn't. And a nice jump. He's having a solid run. Can he combo it into the stoppy here? Not too much, but still a good move. He's got a little bit of time left. 
think he's going to try and get the backflip. Oh, the truck is spinning around. Oh, he's got some red hot brakes. That's the problem. He hit the brakes and the truck wouldn't slow down. So I think that's going to end his run. When the brakes are having problems like that, they don't like to mess around. So three trucks in. We've really not had a full freestyle to this point. Ryan Dishroon had the best run to that point in the night. And it will take the lead with a 7.645, but I don't think it's going to hold for very long. Up next in Monster Jam Freestyle, it's Bad Company, John Gordon, flying the gunslinger flag out here in Tampa, Florida, the home of Scott Hartsock, a native to Florida. Nice jump off of the jammer. Can he get the slap wheelie? Yes, he can. It would be really nice if John Gordon could grab himself a racing win this weekend, especially knowing that Scott Hartsock was such a great racer and that was his pride and joy. Nice leap over that racing lane. He was just floating for a moment. And lining up for the car stack, this thing has given some big air to him in the last few weeks. He decides to just hop over and land on the cars, get a little crushed car action. You know that if John Gordon is to win a competition this weekend, he'd be talking all about Scott Hartsock, so I'm certainly rooting for it. So far, we've not really seen anybody get a really good rhythm tonight. And I think by looking at this track, it seems like the, the dimensions certainly not as big as you would like to see at a stadium. Nice jump. Gunslinger flag holding on for dear life. But because the trucks are pitted on the track, it takes away a little bit of that extra room. But John Gordon really using the middle of the track, which is kind of what you have to do when you don't have that much room on the ends. You have to just focus on getting your big air into the center so that you don't have, you don't have to worry about driving into another truck after landing. Still though, the pace not really what we've seen from John Gordon this year. He's had some really good freestyles, but tonight it seems like he's just trying to, trying to find that momentum, find a good groove. He hasn't really gotten in one yet. Heading over for the backflip ramp. There he goes, he's got the backflip, nice and clean. He hit a little hard on the left side, but he's gonna come right back out. Fans giving him a nice round of applause. That's the first backflip of the night. He's gonna stop it right there. It seemed like that was just a more of a, I need to go out there and just lay down two solid minutes and put down a good freestyle. Feeling good about it? Oh, there you go, the finger guns for Scott Hartsock. I like that tribute there, that's really cool. Not many fans probably picked up on that, but I certainly did. Very cool to see John Gordon paying tribute. And it's a 9.406. That is a bold number there. Whew, that was not much more than like an 8.5, but that's okay. Still, like I said, I'd love to hear John Gordon give an interview this weekend. And if that'll get the job done, I'm okay with that. Here's Colvin Art in the Black Pearl. He hits the racing lane a little bit crooked to start off his freestyle run. Last weekend in Indianapolis, Colvin Art was absolutely on a mission. This man had some bonkers freestyles. He was going absolutely balls to the wall in Indy. A nice slap really there from him. Colvinard also loves to play in Florida. He's always had some pretty good events here in the Sunshine State. It definitely seems like the track is tighter in a lot of different ways because it seems to me like the momentum is being disrupted because they don't have enough room to really get the momentum going. Oh, there we go, picking up the pace with that. A big jump and a combo, okay. Finally starting to pick it up just a tad. The truck shut itself off there, not the tech officials. That was interesting, I wonder why the truck shut off. RII light was not flashing, so. Now he's gonna leap to other side of the pod. Really waiting for someone to have a good freestyle tonight, though. It's really been quite underwhelming. And for Tampa, that's disappointing. But Colvinard certainly showing signs of what could be a really good finisher to the freestyle run. Like I said, last weekend, this man was practically Tom Mentz in the truck. So hopefully he can finish off strong here tonight. I don't know if it's the dirt. It could be the dirt, because the dirt seems to be washing a lot of the tail ends of these trucks out. We saw it a lot in racing and freestyle. Seen a lot of drivers hit the gas and kind of fishtail it. 
So it seems like that's what's hurting the momentum. You really can't keep yourself in a good line because you got to constantly be corrected. Goes to the backflip, really short, boinked off the front end, hit the gas again! Cole the Nard, you monster! And that one looked to be on purpose. I mean, he went a little short intentionally, and that's how you get a big number in freestyle. It's gonna launch her into the center of the track right at the end of the time, and Cole Bernard certainly ended strong. I'd say that's your new run of the night. It was pretty on par with John Gordon, and that backflip certainly was the moment of the night right there. With the score to beat at a 9.4, I'd have to give that a 9.5. I mean, that was a really, really good run, and was it, it was better than Bad Companies. The question is, can the, enough fans give him a higher score than Bad Company for him to actually take the lead? And they do! 9.610! Hey, the Tampa fans, they're doing it right. He's holding the steering wheel out the window, and that was a very good run for Black Pearl and a well-deserved new leader. Take a good look at this beautiful candy apple red Max D that's on the track right now because I highly doubt this body will be staying intact for long with Colt Neichelberger freestyling for the first time since 2020. And he is off and running with a nice leap. Colton Eichelberger in Max D. This man was always such a wild freestyler and he's got big shoes to fill. His father, Tom Mentz, has won every single Saturday freestyle on this series. Can Max D continue it tonight? It's going to be tough. But Colt Neichelberger, look at him comboing it into the stoppy there. He is very capable of getting the job done. Now, he said it in the open. It's not the first time that Colton has filled in for his father because of an injury. He did it back in 2017, and boy, oh boy, was he a madman in that truck that year. Colton Eichelberger really relished in the opportunity to be driving his father's truck. Now, mind you, he is not in his father's chassis right now. This is a CRD chassis. It's a rear engine truck, so it's a little bit different than what his father had. I don't know if he's going to stay in this truck. I'd have to imagine he probably will, but he will be getting to use those special bodies. Look at him really airing it out now. You can tell he's trying to get himself a little bit comfortable trying to get himself adapted not only to the track and the truck, but driving a monster truck at this level again. He has driven monster trucks since, but all have been independently, and they have not been in big events like this, so it really takes a lot to get yourself back into the rhythm. He's going for the backflip ramp. Comes up a little short, bounces it over. Can he get the save too? Yes, he can! Cole Michaelberger gets it done. Back-to-back -back runs with backflip saves. He's got 29 seconds left. Oh, I hope he can keep it going. And the truck has been refired. And get that puppy rolling, Colton. You've got a chance to keep the Max D streak alive. Time to turn it up, though. He's got to really go off in these last few seconds. Thankfully, he did it with enough time to really just let it all loose. You also have to keep in mind, because it's not a truck he's used to driving, He's really not used to how it works. He's shed the body off entirely, and he's popped that front left wheel, so he's going to be done right there. To me, it's pretty close. I don't know, Colton and Cole, they really were pretty much the same. You have two guys who got their starts in Monster Jam driving in 2015, and they both were in the World Finals that year. Actually, I think Cole got his start a little bit later, but still, Colton Michaelberger and Max D trying to get the fans going. Colton Michaelberger, might you remember, he actually got his start driving a Gravedigger truck. That's when he got his start in 2015. We'll see if it's enough. I think the Max D effect might actually help Colton here in Tampa. I'm kind of rooting for the Max D lead here to keep the streak alive. We'll see. Oh, not quite enough. 9.293. I don't entirely disagree. I think Cole had a really good run and he did fill the clock. So Colton is going to have to realize, man, I got to go a little bit bigger than I'm used to going. Oh my, here's the Mohawk Warrior. The Mohawk lost all of its stiffness. <laughs> that thing is just completely flapping around. That thing has no gel in it whatsoever. That thing had a pretty harsh rollover in the skills challenge. So the Mohawk not really holding together, but you know what is? Bryce Kenny and his consistent freestyles. <laughs> 
Because I'll tell you, Bryce Kenny has been one of the most consistently incredible freestylers in 2024. I expect that to continue here in Tampa. Look at that jump off the jammer. He's already done some body damage, so really no reason for him to not just absolutely go insane. Nice slap wheelie, got the tail dragging, just kicking up all that dirt. He is absolutely locked into that slap wheelie. That was great. Not every day that you get to see a slap wheelie that was that absolutely perfect. Oh man, using the racing lane to fly, puts him on the right side, but he's able to correct it. That could have been pretty bad, but Rice Kenny, a very good driver. Slows up before this move, maybe trying to combo it into something, but he didn't get enough of a bounce to try and do it the way he would have liked, so it disrupted his momentum just a tad. Now he's got the speed built up. It doesn't really land very straight, but again, the truck settles itself out. So, he's had a couple awkward landings tonight. Will that continue with the backflip here? We've had two drivers in a row come up short on the backflip. He had a solid landing. He tried to get the moonwalk, but didn't have enough of a bounce for it. Now he's going to launch it right into the center. Another weird landing, and he's still going, but he's also not gotten any weird, crazy saves out of it, so that's not going to help his scores. He's got some time to really tear it up. Now he's hitting things completely incorrectly, but it still won't get a really wild move, though. He's practically trying to make this truck flip over at this point, and it just won't. He's got a broken axle in the back right, so he's got no power back there. That's also not going to help, and he's just going to park it. In a run where Bryce Kenny was doing everything he can to flip over, he somehow managed to drive it all the way to the parking spot. I'll tell you, that was absolutely wild to see Bryce Kenny throwing the truck at any way he could. I mean, that was like shades of Dennis Anderson back in the day. I'm going to run it until it flips over. He couldn't get it to flip over. 8.089 is not going to get the job done. That's a very low score, but I mean, I'll tell you, that was really a result of he had all those jumps that he was trying to make something happen, and the landings were actually counterproductive because they slowed his momentum down and didn't look as cool, but he was trying to make it something great. The next freestyler, Lindsay Reed, had herself a pretty fine freestyle last Sunday in Indianapolis. She had a nice leap in there, got the backflip, so it was nice to see her really tearing it up. And you also saw in that last shot, you might not have, but in that shot of Mohawk Warrior, you saw Cynthia Gautier is here at this event cheering on Lindsay Reed. I'm also pretty sure she's been at like every other event this season, but you know, that's a completely different story. But it's the first time we've seen Cynthia Gautier in a video, so first time I'm mentioning her. Turning it all around to line up for some pretty good air. That was good. You could tell she was like, you know what, I want to really hit this hard. She ended up hitting it pretty aggressively, which is a nice little change of pace. But at a night of what has been a pretty underwhelming Tampa event, I'd like to see her get a little bit more than just decent air. I mean, I was hyping up all this freestyle about, man, Tampa, Tampa, these guys are going to go big. It's the Saturday night commentary. It's Saturday night in Tampa. I want to see these guys go big, and no one's really done it, but Lindsey Reed got a couple big hits in there. Really seems to me like, I mean, I'm not saying for this run, but I'm saying for everyone in general, it just seems like the track conditions themselves are causing some problems. Like, they're really not able to get into a rhythm or... There's not enough room to really air it out, and I think that's the problem. I'd be intrigued to hear what someone has to say about it, because it has been a very, very interesting freestyle competition. Going for the eight-pack backflip. That could be a nice change of pace. Wow! Big air on the backflip. That was a really wild move, and she's able to land it cleanly. That thing was up there. That was a really cool backflip. Wow, her time's over already. It felt like she really didn't hit much of anything, but that's the end of her run. Okay, freestyle for Lindsey Reed. It's an 8.6, so that's not going to get the job done. 
Your next freestyler is Todd the Duke and Megalodon. Your current leader is still Cole Van Arden in the Black Pearl, and I have to say I agree with that. Cole definitely had the best run tonight, but no one has really had... I mean, after last weekend in Indianapolis, I'm watching this, I'm like, what happened? How did all these guys go from having their best freestyles of the year to today we're in Tampa, Florida, and no one's really going nuts. Todd LaDuke and Megalodon had himself a pretty weird weekend last weekend. Saturday night, he had a LaDuke leap at the end of his run, had a pretty wild crash, and then Sunday, he really didn't do anything in freestyle. He ended up doing a couple bicycles in there that I didn't really agree with the timing of. It was a very weird freestyle, and I really would wonder why this is happening for Todd LaDuke. It, it seems it has to be on purpose. He is not having truck problems every weekend. He's just not driving as hard, and I really wonder why. We may never know the answer to that question, but I'll tell you, it's really, it's just too bad because this is a world finals champion twice. One in racing, one in freestyle, and Todd the Duke is just, he's not really driving like it anymore. And I know it's in there. You know Todd the Duke wants to. I just don't know what the, what the difference is or what the disconnect is, but who knows? Got a bicycle going off of the racing lane. Oh, he's got it walked already. About a quarter of the track. He's got some blue fluid spraying out of the bottom of the truck. Now he's flying over. Looked like he wanted to get to the rate the backflip ramp, but he Okay, he wanted to hit the backflip on this side. It was like he had a lot of speed to just ignore the backflip over there. Solid landing on the backflip. So far, though, really nothing else to show for it. He's got to maybe get one more big move, and there it is. Tampa, after all. Go for the LeDuc leap here if he can. Nope, he's going to go for the bicycle. I don't really like that he's doing this at the end of the runs. It's not the time to try. Oh, maybe a wild move. Nah, not quite. He almost had a save in there, but Todd the Duke doing the bicycle at the end of his run ends up biting him, and I mean, that really wasn't much of a great freestyle. Your next competitor here in this competition is Matt Pagliarulo and Jester. It's kind of a half-faced Jester here. Nice air! Look at Jester, fully cleared the pod and then some. Lost his entire left side. That is a very beaten up Jester, my goodness. Matt Paglirulo in his home state of Florida, and nice to see him competing in this event. He typically is always in the Florida events anyway, but, you know, I'm sure he's got some family here at the event. I'm sure he's also happy to have his son Nick back with him. Nice jump. He also, you know, now that I think about it, he probably just met his granddaughter for the first time because he would have been on the road when she was born. Unless he flies in and out, but I don't know. I don't know if they... I don't know enough about the Jester team. I don't know if they drive their own trailers. I have to imagine that they do, but I don't know if Matt himself flies in and out each weekend, so that I could be wrong about. Matt's got himself in a bit of a weird spot here where the truck's kind of in no man's land. Now he's gonna get some nice air. He made up for it. Now Matt Pagliarulo is coming out so late because he had that really cool save off of the backflip last weekend. Maybe he'll be able to get something pretty cool here, too. Wow, a very fast-paced backflip, but it ends up twisting him over. Man, that was a quick revolution on that backflip, and it just, in an instant, dug him into the ground. That is a shame. So Colvinard, still your score to beat at a 9.610, and it is time for the Digatron. Tristan England, the JCB Digatron, your racing winner tonight, is coming out trying to secure a freestyle win as well. Will he be able to get the job done? He rolled her over in skills with a pretty wild crash and the truck doesn't look any worse for the wear. And a nice slap wheelie. Tristan England has started every freestyle this season with a slap wheelie and, well, you know, sometimes every driver, every driver typically has one thing they try and do and it seems like that's Tristan England's. You could really tell last weekend he really started to let her read. It was almost as if he was given permission to just go out there and tear the truck up because he was absolutely 
a different man last weekend in freestyle. It was really cool to see him. Look at him this week already getting some big air in freestyle. Nice to see Tristan England really developing into the driver that we all know he can be. And look at that air over the racing lane. Seems like Tristan England had a little bit of extra adrenaline for breakfast this morning. Whoa! Huge air off the step up. Oh no! That is not the way Tristan England wanted to end. And unfortunately, he took a big risk with that leap and it failed big time. Man, too, too bad. And Tristan England, I'm sure, frustrated after that one. Oh, that got me fired up. Your next competitor, Tyler Menninger and Gravedigger. And thank you, co-host Bryce Kenny, for firing up me and the fans. Here's your final competitor tonight. And Tyler Menninger can take what has been a fairly underwhelming event and turn it into a masterpiece with a classic Tyler Menninger Gravedigger freestyle. And he's already getting big air using the racing lane. Oh, no! Save it, Tyler! Oh, baby! Can he save it? Yes, he can! Woohoo! I was, I was on the edge of my seat there. I didn't want that run to end that early. My goodness, and I bet Tyler Menning is wiping his brow of the sweat. That certainly started beating on that one. And he's still not holding back, though. He is not calming down. A man after Ryan Anderson's intentions, if I've ever seen it. Oh, look at that air. That was unbelievable. Tyler Menninga is a man on a mission tonight, and he is flying. He has had a disappointing night. The Gravedigger fans have been disappointed all night, and he is not letting anyone walk out of this building feeling unfulfilled, I'll tell you. He is also not leaving me in my room unfulfilled either, because I'll tell you what, this man is putting on a great freestyle so far. Really love to see Tyler Menninga every single event. This man is a prize to watch. It is an honor to be able to commentate over this man in every single event. He is flying up to the backflip ramp. Wow, he carried a lot of speed to that and he got a little baby moonwalk too. That was, I don't think I've ever seen anyone drive that fast up to a container backflip ramp. Oh my, oh my! The car stack sends him into the next county. I knew he was lining up for it, and that was absolutely full commitment. Is he done? Nope, he was just a little stuck up on the side. He's maybe got time for one more move, and he's just gonna fly it into the center. So much speed, slamming on the brakes to keep it from just careening into the stands. That was absolutely amazing. Tyler Menninga in Gravedigger. That's already got to be a strong contender for freestyle of the week holy cow tyler menninga comes out here and practically took my voice away that was your run of the night that has to be your winner it is tampa it is one of the homes of gravedigger dennis anderson built this house this has to take the lead this has to be your winner it has to be he won the skills challenge and, well, I'd say he's in a pretty good spot to walk away with an overall tonight. Let's see the score for Tyler Menninga. It's enough! They did it! Tyler Menninga and Gravedigger has won freestyle tonight. And what a night of scoring from the fans. Round of applause to the fans. They did it right, but I expected nothing less from the fans in Tampa, Florida. Tampa fans. Oh, look, Marty gave him the gong, too. Love that. He gonged him right away. I'll tell you, these fans in Tampa, Florida fans, they know their monster trucks. These guys are the greatest. That was fantastic and such a well-deserved freestyle win. Now, we've got to find out who your overall event champion is, but first, let's hear what Tyler has to say. That's right, Tampa fans. Well, 
Tyler Menninga one freestyle. Will it be enough for the overall? And yes, it is. Tyler Menninga, your overall event champion tonight. Who, baby? Tyler Menninga had himself a very weird day. Got knocked out a little early in the racing competition. Skills was great, but I'm sure he was a little disappointed by the number. And now that he gets to come out here in freestyle, this man did not disappoint. That was one of his best freestyles of the year, if not his best. It was a masterpiece, and Tyler Menninga is a master at his craft. One of the best drivers to ever sit behind the wheel of a monster truck came out here and absolutely dominated. The black and green wrecking machine took what was a pretty disappointing event and ended it with fireworks. That was the end of the competition. And I mean, pretty decent event in Tampa, but I'm really hoping tomorrow can step it up because tonight was not as great as you'd like to see. We'll see if it'll get the job done tomorrow. Let's take a look at what is to come in the upcoming commentary schedule. Good night, Wayne. And there you have your upcoming commentary schedule. We've got Tampa, Florida tomorrow night. And then next weekend, we have ourselves two more events in Anaheim. And then we go to Minneapolis, another place that has had some moments in Monster Jam history. Very exciting to see what Minneapolis will have to come. But before we get to those, we've got to wrap it up here in Tampa Bay, Florida. And for the first time this year, we've got commentaries on the same series back-to-back -back days, which should be pretty fun. I'm excited for a little change of pace. But three commentary weekend. We're already more than halfway through. We've got one more to go. I hope you guys tune in tomorrow night. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.